Hello friend, welcome back to Total Maintenance YouTube channel. I just finished scheduled routine detail and thorough vehicle inspection and what was just a routine check became a horror, at least for me and for the owner. Uh, what I found out, I, I still can't believe, I'm totally like, I, I, I have no words what I just saw. So, I need to get it out of my chest. Please listen, be my therapist. I will tell you what happened. You won't believe this content. I know this customer because she already had Toyota Corolla, right? 0304 Toyota Corolla, which I inspected for her, then maintained. But she's too nice and she sold it to the friend for a little bit of money because she thought, well, I will buy something with less miles. And she did. So here are my notes and the inspection results. I will keep looking at it and using it for you. So she goes and buys 2003 Toyota Corolla C. It's a base model, right? It's nothing power. And it has 117,000 miles. So, so far so good, right? She's super excited and she finally brings it to me for complete detail inspection. So she brings it in, I keep her driving in, I'm like, oh, why this simple Corolla has some weird, ugly, cheap aftermarket rims on it, right? I'm like, oh, and that should be your red flag already, right? Like, who's customizing this basic car, which is for driving from A to B, right? That's a nonsense. So that, that should have been a red flag already. Now here in California to finish the transfer she needs to smog it, right? So she's asked, please can you tell me if it's smogable? So I scan the computer, there are no codes, all the monitors are complete, the green light, so she's ready for the smog. She can go and finish the transfer. And I tell you what, that's the last good news you will hear about this. The airbag light is on, so I take the VIN or the license plate, right? I go on Toyota.com, Toyota USA page. I try to check for recalls, but it keeps no results, no results. So I don't know what's up with that. She might be eligible for some recall, but I couldn't confirm this. So obviously now it goes. I first, when it, before I drive it between the lift towers, right? So I check the cabin air filter, of course, that's the junk that looks like it was never replaced. It's like a pool in concrete of muck and dirt and everything. So I just throw it away right away. The, the car cannot even work, the AC system, right? Put the car between the tower for the position where it can be lifted and I go and open the hood. And now the insanity starts. And to be organized, you start from the right to left or vice versa, right? So I start on the right side, I open the engineer filter. And that's another last thing, which was good. It looks brand new and clean, so that, that's okay. Then I look on the battery, where the battery is six years old. So I'm like, okay, let's test it for her. Of course, it doesn't pass the test. State of health is super low. It's bad, so... The result is replace the battery. The positive battery terminal, it's broken, right? Completely broken and somebody put like construction screw and tries to hold it down there, right? So that's going to fall off any second anyway. Then, what is the next thing? Automatic transmission fluid, it's completely dark, full of black residue, right? So that should be flushed very soon, right? The night check engine oil, it's touching the low, but it's okay, that wasn't so bad. Now she says, oh, my friend replaced for me the spark plugs. I'm like, okay, let's see what he put there. I removed the spark plug number one. When I'm removing it, I immediately see it's not torqued correctly. It was barely torqued, it's completely loose, and it's a wrong spark plug. He got somewhere some NG case instead of Denso's, right? But the number it's incorrect for that engine. The engine is 1ZZFE, right? Incorrect spark plug, 
not tight. Was brand new though. Now I'm in the middle of the engine bay, right? So I'm looking on the radiator, on the coolant. The cap is there, the overflow, the reservoir, it's overfilled, it's all the way up with like a light green water basically, right? We know, all of you know, there's supposed to be Toyota long life coolant, which is a red in color, right? So that's completely incorrect, overfilled, that should be flushed. As I travel to the left, which is the passenger side, now it goes, bang! That engine is wrapped in the oil. The serpentine belt, it's full of cracks, it's completely gone, but it's everything's black. It's running in the massive engine oil leak. Everything, the alternator, everything is just full of oil and it's already dripping on the ground, on the floor of the garage. Just unreal. Finishing to the left on the passenger side, right, you have the power steering reservoir, so that's completely black there, it's just completely not done, right? And you will think, okay, I'm done here. Well, I'm not. I'm looking on the back of the light, the bulb, which is for turn, the orange bulb, just hanging in the engine. It's not in the light assembly, right? It's just hanging on the wire, like hanging there in the engine. The light assembly has these steps on the top. Some of them are broken. So I'm like, what is this insanity? Some of the wires which are to the lighting has like somebody tap into it and get the wires somewhere else. I'm thinking, wow, what's going on here? This is nuts. And that's all I can see standing right above the car. The, the vehicle is still on the floor, right? So that's your point of view. That's what you are looking at. Now it's time to get it up in the air. And it goes way, way worse. The corolla goes up and I'm looking in the wells, right? Where the front wheels are. All these liners which are in the fenders, it's all gone. I'm looking on the body of the car, it's all missing. I'm looking where are the side plastic covers and under the engine, under the radiator plastic covers, all missing. I'm still standing on the passenger side, right? So I walk to it, I'm looking, why is this windshield wiper reservoir moving like this, like swinging. Oh, because it's supposed to be have two bolts bolted to the body and it has only one, so it's swinging there like a pendulum, the whole reservoir. I'm like, wow, I'm really getting over helm right now. I'm looking at it. That oil dripping on that side where is the timing chain cover and the main pulley and so on. It's just nuts, it's unbelievable. So now you are underneath the vehicle, I'm looking right with the light I'm like, yeah, all the covers are missing. Oh, the front grille is taped by some silver tape, like a silver duct tape or something, right in the middle, like what's, what's happening here? And then I finally realized on the driver's side, where the frame goes to the front, where is the bumper and there is that steel element, which basically is for the crash, right? That part of the frame is slightly bent, there are like holes in it, and this car was in the front end collision, and obviously it was hit, or it did hit something on the driver's side. If you compare it with the passenger, that frame rail is perfectly straight, this one is bent, not very much, but it's damaged, and that's why we see everything is gone, everything is Mickey Mouse on this car, it's just absolute nightmare. I never saw anything like this in my life with so many problems on the one single car, right? Of course, one of the CV shafts, the inner boot is ripped on, on the driver's side. It's just unbelievable. This car was Perfect example, right? This was such a lesson today and that's why I'm sharing it with you. I'm still like, wow, what did I just see? This is the biggest extreme. It's the worst Toyota Corolla. So in my life, working on the cars, how long? I don't know. Working for the dealer. I work on these cars. I saw so many. 
this poor thing was so neglected and abused and absolutely not taken care of or ran to the ground as we say right the worst scenario worst thing i ever saw and i want to share it with you right and i want it bring up if you buy a used car don't just walk around and say hey this is nice there are no dings and dents in the body right from standing normally next to the car the car is re relatively low you don't see much inside interior i didn't really see anything it looked totally normal right the steering wheel had like a little like bites like a dog will bite in it i was asking I'm like oh was it the dog owners maybe but other than that nothing damaged ripped burned and so on the interior was pretty okay everything started after opening the hood and the worst was only visible when the vehicle was on the lift if she saw this before paying money she will never buy but she made a huge mistake and i asked her hey what happened here why did you end up with this because right now we are counting together and we are already in two grand in estimates, two thousand dollars. And we even don't know what is leaking on that side of the timing chain cover. Why, why didn't you bring it here? And she tells me this. Well, I didn't buy it around here, so I, I couldn't bring it uh, to you like the other car. I traveled outside it was a different city and the seller it was a nice family they were so nice i totally trusted them so you know i negotiated a little bit of price with them and i just bought it it was running so what is the lesson from this right who cares how the seller is nice and smiling doesn't matter right you need to inspect the car from outside, you need to go inside, go through the interior, watch for the signs of abuse and neglect, open the hood, inspect everything under the hood and make sure you will get under the car too. If you are not in your area, in your town where you have your own mechanic with his shop, go drive to the closest shop and ask them, can you please for five minutes, can you lift it, this vehicle for me? I will pay you, let's say 50 bucks, right? And you have to look under and many times there can be a lot of discovered right there. So I want to share this with you as a title probably says importance of pre-purchase inspection. If you are buying old car, you have no idea what the previous owner did with it. And on top of it, it could have been in collision. The title is still clean because it was a small collision and the owner just tried to hide it, fix it up a little bit, Mickey Mouse, right? And just dump it on you. So you don't want to end up in this situation. So thank you for being my therapist. I finally got that story out of my chest and I can go on with today. And make sure you are subscribed. I will have a lot of Toyota videos for you on this channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice weekend, my friend.